This is The Scale Up Show, bringing you the latest on income, marketing, and entrepreneurship. Well, I think that one of the biggest things when it comes to business, and if you start to become an entrepreneur, I think it's personal development. It's either yeah, because someone told you that, or I guess if you just Google online the word entrepreneur on YouTube, most likely the first video you're going to get is like billion dollar morning routine, billion dollar this, billion dollar yeah, manifestation. 100%. You know, so it's it's uh, yeah, it's it's something you, I think, very quickly need to realize how you can utilize for yourself because it's like something you can't really at least I don't think you can win or play out. It's mm-hmm. an ongoing thing that will stay with you for life, and you have to keep going to it. Yeah, I think everyone goes through phases as well, right? Where you'll get up like extremely early, like abnormally early, where you you know for a fact it's never going to last. Mm-hmm. But just when because you've got that motivation at the moment, like you'll get up like five thirty, six a.m. You'll do the the morning meditation, the affirmations, yeah, exactly. and stuff like that. And then once you realize what works for you, then obviously you start changing things in your own morning routine so that it's more beneficial to you and it's more in line with how you work and how you are as a person, I think. And, and, and that's the thing, the most important, and what's worked for you um, is most important. Don't, don't try to to emulate, uh, to emulate from someone else and to, oh, I need to wake up at 5 a.m. club or something. It's, for me, it's that <laughs> bullshit. And <laughs> but isn't it, isn't it like, it's kind of ironic because it's kind of like to every person you kind of speak with in this uh, in this space, if you like to call it, if they wanted to become an entrepreneur and they want to start a business, it's somehow, somewhere, that it's been told like, hey, you need to wake up early. But why? Like, what? why should you wake up early? Why not wake up at 10 and 11? Like, what's yeah. the difference? Uh, yeah. from, from sometimes, for me, that works better. And sometimes uh, I w- mm-hmm. wake, wake up at 6 and I, I wake up when I have a great idea and I think, like, I start working. <laughs> no, right exactly. Today. That, that's a, uh, and so, so, of course, maybe you have an appointment and you need to be on time. I think that's really important. But uh, it's, it's also important to have some, some, some goals for yourself, some, some weekly mm-hmm. goals. Uh, I work, uh, uh, you see Momentum, and we had it in the Mastermind, we saw the Momentum plugin for Chrome. Yeah. And, and I use it now every day, and I'm not always using it every day, but I try to use it every day, and uh, uh, give one or two, three tasks I need to finish on, on, on uh, today, for example. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, that, and that, that works for me really well, to so make short to-do lists, super key to super short, and just yes, do what's on your to-do list. And if you have something to add, just add it, but set, set it for, for tomorrow, for, for example. I think it just spans to, I think a lot of people think that by doing something, they're busy. So I think if you very quickly need to realize that just putting in action doesn't really mean you're moving forward. Yeah, Like you can I go agree. through the gym every morning, but if you- You're just going through the motions, yeah, there's no go, point. Exactly, yeah. you know, it's like, it, it feels in your head you're doing something, you're, yeah. you're moving places, but in reality, you're actually going backwards because you're not really chasing things up. And I think it's kind of what business design is like, when I really realized for myself is that it's not about the hours you put in, it's about the efficiency. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So, so if you think about, you know, the Elon Musk's, the Jeff Bezos of this world, it's kind of like they realize that most likely they're in, like in terms of time and day and the focus you have, you can only really make three or four big decisions. Mm-hmm. Like it's impossible to be on the dot every single hour. You yeah. simply just can't. So if you know this, you need to be efficient. So if you can wake up, you can do your stuff within like an hour or two hours, you're going to get more done than someone who's working 24 seven without yeah. really moving the needle. Exactly. I, I call it more the deep work. Uh, exactly. I really, I, I'm a big fan of doing deep work. and. Uh, since my daughter is born, I only work maybe one, one and a half hour a day at max. Mm-hmm. No yeah. more time, uh, other, other prior priorities. So, uh, uh, and then I put in my, uh, my earphones, um, start up my computer, and also having a schedule for doing it. Uh, open my uh, schedule only once, open my email, maybe at the beginning and at the end. For example, if I have a great mm-hmm. idea, I don't open my email because maybe there's something in it and it gives distraction. Exactly. So I turned email completely off. All my notifications on all my devices are off. The only notifications what is activated is my alarm system. Mm-hmm. Only the really, really important things, I'm thinking, oh, this is, uh, if, this is not, if I get a notification about it, my alarm or my, uh, our security system, I'm thinking, oh, that's maybe important, and all other systems are 100% off. Yeah. No social media, no email notifications nothing and th- that gives me a, 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 yes, the possibility to do some deep work and then I, I, what i see I, I can do something what, what you normally did maybe eight six hour day for and i do it in maybe 45 minutes exactly yeah. i'm the exact because exact no same. distractions at all that's so important yeah especially people ringing me like uh, my phone is 24 7 it's on do not disturb like i do not want people ringing me because they're sort of like taking control over my agenda if they do like yeah. if they if they want to contact me, they can send me an email, a WhatsApp, or an iMessage, and I'll just reply when I have the time. Yeah. And that for me is much more efficient than them being able to ring me whenever they want. Same goes for clients as well. 
like they'll book in through the Calendly. They cannot book a call on demand. Like they cannot send me a message, hey, are you free for a call right now? Even if I am available, the answer by default is no, because I don't want to train my clients into thinking that they can exactly. contact me at any point in the day. Because the more the more time I spend speaking to the clients, the less time I can spend in the ads manager actually focusing on the service delivery. But yeah, I agree with you guys, like the more sort of I'm on this journey, the less I'm actually working hours wise. Because yes, I'm and, much and more focused on yes, the and deep about way. the phone calls. I really hate phone calls. Yeah. For, especially for business because just what you're saying, it, that you're, you're you're working on something or you have some maybe some time off and you get a call and you need to drop everything because you need to answer exactly. your phone. And, and, and that's the reason I forward all my phone calls to an uh, agency who takes the call. <laughs> Ask what's the matter and, I mean, like and send me an email. And they are even not allowed to 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 connect calls to me. They they can do that, yeah, exactly. but they're not allowed to do that that's because I really wrong. want no. I want no phone calls. So that's the reason I have the agency. Um, you can have a lot of agencies. You can can do that for you. They answer your phone. Ask what what's all about. They and send me a short email. So if I see a missed phone call, I and. 20 minutes later, maybe an hour later, when I say, okay, I, I log into my email and say, oh, oh, this, this, or this was this person, or, or, mm-hmm. or, or and it's about that. Okay, maybe I email them back, or maybe I call them back, but I don't really like to be, yes, I have my schedule, everything around my phone. Yeah. I, I think it's just like a, a Zoom call or a phone call, I like to call it, it's just in, inefficient from the get-go. Like 99% of the things that happen on these calls, they can be done either through text or through some sort of software. Yeah. It's kind of like the system I have with, with my VA as well is every day when that person stops working, they just send me a voice message. And all I have to do is wake up in the morning, just listen to the voice, just listen to the voice message. And then from there, I know exactly what, what's going on yeah. without ever having to call each other physically. Exactly. And, that, and that's great yeah. with voice messages. And I think that we need more to use voice messages. And with, uh, there's a new update coming for WhatsApp that you will transcribe your voice message. Google Voice is already doing mm-hmm. it for you. So if you have used Google Voice, they will transcribe your voicemail. That's great. Um, but if WhatsApp is also start uh, transcribing your messages, you can use it yeah. much, much more. It's much faster to uh, do a uh, um, uh, 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 text message. And yes, it's uh, I really like to do that. I do it with my team. I do sometimes uh, use voice messages just to say something. It's, it works great. Yeah. It's better than a phone call because you can they have the same um, yeah, the, the same language, but in a much more efficient way. Yeah, and like I said, you can just listen to it whenever you've got the time available. And faster. Yeah. I realize yeah, because you can it, speed it up. My speed time is always 1.5 at least. Or 2x. And sometimes yeah. faster. It depends on the person. Yeah. <laughs> most, yeah. It's actually gotten to the point now where if I'm in a conversation with someone in real life and there's no speed button, like <laughs> you get really impatient. You're like, okay, come on, get to the point. Yeah, what, exactly. what is it that you're trying to tell me? Yeah, man. But I think Slack's also uh, now done that, right? Where you yeah, can exactly. transcribe the voice yeah. notes. Yeah, man. Absolute yeah, game changer. Helpful. Yeah. It's funny because people outside the sort of the entrepreneurial space, they will not use the, uh, the voice notes as much as we do. I think it's just like a natural thing that, cause it's efficient, right? Mm-hmm. So when I send voice notes to people that are not in the entrepreneurial space, they're like, dude, just call me or send me a message. Don't send voice notes, it's, uh, it's random. It's to the point, it just becomes an automated system. Yeah. It's kind of like on a daily basis, you have these these chats going on. And like sometimes when there's something outside of this, mm-hmm. like it's uh, you're speaking with someone else has nothing to do with your business. You're yeah. so automated, you respond to that person the same way. Yeah. And then they kind of come back to you. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, what do you even mean? Because I, I always use like the thumbs up or like the caps. Yeah, emoji, exactly. Because that's how I communicate to people who work with me. Because then I, they know yeah. what I want from them. And then if you respond this, they, they look at you, who is this idiot? Like, what the yeah. hell did you even try it's, to say to me? It's funny because sometimes like the, the thumbs up can be seen as sarcastic. Yeah, I know. But we use it all the time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, man, it's funny. Yeah, I think it just, it kind of probably stems together is, because the conversation is like what we have now is you very quickly need to realize like what works for you and where you need to take it then. Yeah. Because then you can build a system around it. I think it's the same with, um, kind of what we discussed earlier a little bit is like when it comes to books as well. Like a mm-hmm. lot of people think if I need to become successful, I need to read. Again, I don't know why, maybe someone ever told them, hey, this successful people read, so maybe I need to read as well. Yeah. But this for me, it was like, it's super inefficient to just sit there and read through a whole book. Because quite often the I book agree. is like 300 pages, but there's like one page with golden nuggets. Yeah. So you need to read how it applies to you. Because it's like, I could read a book three years ago and read the book now, I'm gonna learn different things. Yeah. Because I'm just in a different yes. mind. Mode. Yes. And that's with everything. Like every aspect of life, what you learned from it a couple of years ago, based on where you yeah. are right now in life, you're gonna catch up different things. Mm-hmm. And that's a good thing. And you need to realize that it's also the case, you need to be open for it. That's why yeah. people always say, you like kind of break out of your, your confidence or break out of your 
you know, mm -hmm. your circle, your span, because yeah. that allows you to get access to these points. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's a good thing. As you start just reading a book, most people just read a book from A to C, and that that's, <laughs> that's it. And, and yeah, for a roman or something, <laughs> that yeah, that's fine, of course. But for if you want to learn something from the book. Before I open the book, just I never. Oh, if I've got a new book and for my mastermind from the US, I get a lot of books sent mm -hmm. sent to my home. But I never open them before I want to uh, think about uh, what I want to learn from this book. And then I open the the index page and I go exactly. Yeah. What are the most important uh, uh, chapters? And sometimes I say, okay, this is uh, maybe everything is interesting, and I read everything. But I write. Uh, I always write something. Where I make it always a summary mm -hmm. for myself. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, as on school. Uh, yes, uh, it, uh, to learn it, 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 only reading it is not working. For me, you uh, need not to take action. Yeah, you need to take action. Yeah, and it's kind of like, it's like I, I always say is, if you read one book a year and you take all the knowledge from the book and you apply it, you've already outperformed ninety nine percent of the people reading. Yeah, books. that are reading like a yeah. book a week. Because people they they look on Instagram or Facebook and there's someone who says, Hey, this book changed my life, boom, they buy the book. Yeah. They read it and they're like, Oh, why? And I think exactly. that's why, you know, the millionaire morning routine, the billion mm -hmm. dollar morning routine, like those are the most watched videos on YouTube. Yeah. Because I guess people always want the, the quick fix. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just, I don't know, people find it interesting to see. They think by waking up five AM doing yoga, doing meditation and doing all this stuff is then going to allow them to either get something. Yeah. And again, you know, I'm gonna have the harsh truth for you. It's gonna change anything. If you yeah. if you would woken up at 12, but you would have taken two hours of action. Exactly. You would actually gonna close it to your goal and doing all the other stuff. Yeah. I think it's Alex Omoji, right? That says that like, yeah, rather than doing a that. whole morning routine, mm. he just gets up and gets to work. And he says, in the two hours that people spend doing the affirmations and the meditations, he's already got two hours of work done. <laughs> it's you know exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I think what I said in the beginning is important to make it the best routine for yourself exactly. and and what works and uh, write it down. Uh, um, yeah, perfect and, point. And yeah. do that for uh, four or six weeks. Write every week down what what you uh, want to do. What uh, and at the end of the week on Sunday, for example, what you did and review back for a few weeks. You don't have to do it all the time. I did it for myself for a few weeks just to optimize my own process. Yeah, where where was I wasting time? No, one was phone calls. So I eliminated mm -hmm. phone calls and I eliminated a lot of work just because I, I did it for six weeks myself, write every 15 minutes, okay, what I did I did the last 15 minutes and write down in a, in a, one, in a, in a few words. And then I, and last uh, week later, I analyzed the week before. Just how to see yes, wh where you can find some improvement. Because if you're just doing the work all day, you were busy, you at the end of the week, you don't know what you did on one Monday. But I think no, it's true. what you just basically concluded is that you took control of your subconscious mind which is a very important thing. I think that the sooner you can get access to this, as in like, you know, we all have our personal battles every day. Mm -hmm. you know, and I think the difference between, I don't want to say like a successful person because it sounds kind of cheesy, mm -hmm. but I guess just someone who knows what they want to do in life and they got to figure it out. And yeah. It sounds super cheesy to say, but technically they escaped the matrix. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, you know, is the topic people always like to call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it all stems down to that point because mm -hmm. it's kind of like, if you know you wake up in the morning and there are personal battles you need to deal with, like everyone has it. But if you know that's the case, you can move on. You know, we're not 100% every day. Yeah. And that's kind of where discipline comes into place. Because if it's, you are 10%, but you still show up, you did show up and you got it done. Yeah. I think it's also just focusing on stuff that actually like moves the needle. Like what, yeah. you know, we just discussed about deep work. You know, if I look at um, the amount of, well, yeah, like I said, the amount of hours I work, it's now much less than it was previously. And then when I get the question, like, what books do you read? What podcasts do you listen to? What videos do you watch on YouTube? It's like, it's either much less than people expect or it's mm -hmm. completely different than what people expect. No, I exactly. got the question uh, last week on my coaching where someone asked me, like, what um, SMMA related videos do you watch on YouTube? And my answer was none. Yeah, I, do not, I do not watch <laughs> social media marketing content on YouTube no. because if I want information or if I want to go to know it, I'll just speak to people that I surround myself with and I'll get better quality information, I'll get better quality feedback and something that is directly, um, you know, applicable to my situation. Mm -hmm. Whereas the YouTube content, first of all, you know, it's free content, so there's a lot of fluff. People out there are just trying to sell you stuff anyway. And, you know, it's, it's the content's never really relevant. It's a lot of filler content just to get content out there. Yeah, and the problem with YouTube is they want the, that you keep watching. They, they want watch time. Yeah. The goal of YouTube exactly. is watch time. So yeah. they exactly. do everything. And if, uh, I, I, of course, I also watch YouTube videos, but maybe 
one in the two weeks. Maybe I, I'm really uh, yeah. uh, careful with YouTube because when you start up, you get commercials, you get a lot of suggestions, yeah, exactly. and before you know, it's one hour later and you watch a lot of crappy videos and you learn nothing, or maybe <laughs> not, 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 no. not all the things you want. Yeah, yeah. So that's it, it, it's really a trap sometimes to, to start um, searching on YouTube. It, it's a great platform, don't, don't, don't understand me wrong, but it's, uh, yes, it's sometimes a little bit dangerous. I think it's like, for me, I'm kind of at the point where I just physically, I just cannot sit and watch a whole video. No. Like I know with, I'm not the you know, and I, I don't want to say it's like, oh, be time efficient, but it's just when I sit there, like I will skip through the video until I find what I'm looking for. Exactly. Yeah. It's the same with like, if I would now in the evening turn on Netflix, I just cannot sit and watch a whole movie. No. It's just impossible for me to get that done at this point, which sometimes is annoying. But yeah. I guess it's just a, a buy effect what you get of this. Mm -hmm. And I think it all stems down to for, for you to get to this point where you can kind of speak and say, hey, I have control of my subconscious mind, like you have to realize who you are. Yeah. And then we've discussed it in earlier episodes of the podcast as well, like by doing personality traits and it kind of what Joshua said as well, like if you have that circle around you, mm -hmm. is you're going to be like five people closest to you. Yeah. So if the five people close to you all struggle to get here or they're all stuck in a certain job or they don't want to know this, you're going to be the same. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's like the blind leading the blind. Like if, if there's no one there that understands how to get to that next point, you, you know, you're not going to benefit from that circle. Yeah. Yes, and we, we talked about the books, but what, what I also liked, and I did it only last year, I started with audiobooks, and that works great. Oh, it's a game yeah. great. Yeah. Because um, uh, I do it mostly in my car, so I, when I drive to my office, I like to have a separate office for my mm -hmm. home, so I drive to my office, and and I and not uh, not every day because I need to be in the mood. Sometimes I start it up and after ten seconds, okay, uh, and yeah. I'm not in the mood to, mm -hmm. to listen to this at the moment, so I turn on some music or something else, or nothing. That's also possible. But I really like to, to do audiobooks, and it's so much faster. You can uh, and a thousand page books. You can and, and, and maybe in I don't know exactly, but in, in a it's much shor shorter time you can yeah no uh, I agree and uh, hear it. The only thing what, what I don't like from audiobooks is if they explain, for example, a visual or an yeah. explain yeah, a table. Man, that's and yeah. that's sometimes I was listening the four hour work week a few months ago on um, on yeah. the audiobook and he is, explains every source, everything of yeah, the is boring. The websites. W w w yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Goes too far, man. Yeah. Yeah. It goes so it's, yeah. it's a great way to if you struggle to get through books or to get the information, it's like what I used to do like ages ago when I uh, lived abroad and I started to get into this, I would just listen to the audiobook while physically also reading it. Yeah, I do the so same. then while in your head you're reading the words, yeah. in your brain you're also hearing the voices. You're getting the best of both worlds. And exactly, you can just combine combine them all together. Yeah, yeah. I think again, that comes down to what works best for you. So I, when I when I listen to a book or read the book, usually I do, I alternate between the two. Mm -hmm. So on the morning walks, I'll do the audiobook version. And then when I'm back at home, I'll just carry on where I left off, like with the physical book. And then over night time, when I want to switch the lights off, I'll carry on with the ebook just to, to keep, get it in. Keep the circle roll. Yeah, exactly. No, I think. And maybe to 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 sum up this 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 podcast, this episode, um, I, I found uh, I found an app a year ago. It's called. It was just searching on my phone. It's called Blinkist. Oh, Blinkist. That's and cool. that's it, it's no, it's uh, it feels quite expensive. You pay maybe one hundred euros uh, or US dollars a year, but you get almost all books, a summary of all books. Yeah, like so. If you want, right? what Aaron said, if you want to just want to read one important thing about the book, just buy the software, and you can get all books um, for yes for free if you have the license. Now you can only read the summary, but you have the most important things. Yeah. So. Everyone was talking about Think and Grow Rich. So I bought the book, mm -hmm. quite thick thing, a big book, yeah. a little bit old. So I, of course, you have a rewritten version, but, uh, but I, I was starting it because I was not impressed. So I was like, okay. Yeah. So I did, okay, I, I read it in 14 pages on, on, on Blinkist. On Blinkist, yeah. And, and like, okay, I know, I, 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 I have, and now, I know I can say, okay, I know where the, the books are all about. So yeah, that's, and that, exactly. that was really nice to do. And doing it more, yeah. much more books, I do that. And with one book was um, made to stick, uh, it triggered me, and then I bought the real books. Okay, I want, yeah. I want to write, I read everything. Yeah. But it's it's a really good. Uh, sometimes uh, as a, you can, can use it as a preview or uh, just to get the yeah the, the, the main purpose of the book. It's really nice. Yeah, I think that's a great way kind of to end this podcast because like you know if you embody everything we just discussed. It's kind of like, most likely if you start to talk to someone who they kind of approach me and say, hey, and how do I start with entrepreneurship? And there's a 99% chance 
that topic they're gonna ask you, hey, have you read the book Think and Grow Rich? Yeah, yeah? always. You know, it's, and it's the same with like, have you read Rich Step for That? Because mm -hmm. I think those two books are gonna be- That's what starts you off. They're, they're golden nugget. Yeah. And it's fine, because it's a great way to get you in there. But I think those two books are also, most likely two of the most misunderstood concepts yeah. in the entire world. Because yeah. people think they know what uh, it's being taught in them, but it's completely different. It's yeah. a complete 180. And you think you need to get farther before you really, really realize this. Yeah. Fun fact, I didn't actually know there was a rewritten version of Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, there are I read the old English version. It took me like, no way. Well, it took me three months to read. It was so hard. Yeah. I was like, oh my days, how are people, like, how are people getting through this book? But yeah, man. A funny thing is like, for me, the most influential book is probably still the four hour work week. More than yeah, Rich That Poor That, yeah. more than Think yeah. and Grow Rich. Yes. Just the concepts, the book is from, what was it, 2007? But still, to this, if, I, if I'd read it now, it'd still be applicable to this day. And maybe that, that's a good subject for the next episode because hey. I have the four hour work week at the moment. I have it. And I will explain it next, next time. Hey, there we go. Hey, I think, yeah, let's, uh, let's tune in next, on next week's episode and uh, we'll get into it straight away.